They put the drugs out here and now they don't want us out here. Uh, the demons inside of me, you know, they, uh, they don't sleep. On a given day, 400 to 800 people are on the streets here looking for their next high. Like, I know they're trying to clean it up right now, but I don't know where they expect everyone to go. Kensington, Philadelphia used to be a lively place, but now it's known for drugs. In this documentary, I, I talk to people from the area to show what life is really like there. Get ready to see the tough truth about Kensington, the biggest outdoor drug market on the East Coast. How do you end up in Kensington? Um, someone introduced me to it 10 years ago. Uh, I'm an addict. Um, right now I'm homeless. We had to move out of my uh, the mother-in-law's house. Uh, I just kept running away from everything, problems. When I didn't have problems, when I was happy, sad. When I was nothing, I just came down here. I got discharged from Jefferson towards the hospital. Uh, they wouldn't provide provide transport back to my home city. Um, so they more or less just said, we wish you the best of luck and good luck to you. What brought you down here? Family. Your family live out here? Yeah, I got two sisters here out of nine. Got yeah. nine sisters, two of them live in Philly, but I got stuck with the drugs, man. What was it like for you in Kensington growing up out here? I ran the streets since I was a buck. Fucking, fucking niggas running wild, getting that chicken, getting high. like right around when COVID started, um, I ended up not having my name on the lease and the landlord where I was staying didn't want to renew the lease because of everything that was going on and the person who I was uh, renting a, plate, a room from, uh, his dad had gotten sick so he ended up moving back home with his dad so it was kind of like up in the air and then when the governor closed everything down I had no job, and not for nothing, the, the restaurant that I was at was, uh, was too small to kind of give anyone uh, any type of furlough or any anything to hold them over, so I was uh, a little SOL <laughs> and ended up coming out here after a couple months of staying with a couple friends, ones that actually could, you know, accept people that weren't family. I came here because of my mom. And at the age of 10, I started selling drugs. Why so young? I got introduced to the drug game. What was your first impression of Kensington when you got here? Like the first time? Your first I, day. I was under the impression that we were going to Bucks County. So when I got up here, I mean, I drove and the guy was like, lock the doors, don't make eye contact with anybody, just keep your head down and wait until I get back. And it scared me, I was like 22 at the time. I was a big, not a big time drug dealer out here, but I was getting money out here. I went to turn in 27,000 to the connect. And my right hand man tried to take me out. And you say you were shot in your leg? Yeah. Well, thank God you were alive, brother. What did that experience teach you? What did you learn from that experience? I still was in the streets getting, getting money. And this, that, that shit didn't stop me. Uh, now, I just get high, you know what I mean? Uh, the drugs aren't what they're telling you they are. Um, I see a lot of nasty uh, wounds, and I know that when I try to get clean, it's much harder than it used to be. Um, and uh, people are mean to us. Just, they stereotype us. Uh, they think we're going to steal from them. Uh, not everybody's a thief just because they get high. I don't appreciate that. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, I just feel like they put the drugs out here and now they don't want us out here, but they, they're the ones that are selling it. Guys, fuck. Life, life wasn't always 
this bad. Like, you know, I'm, I'm a very educated person. I did, uh, I'm a carpenter and a mason. Uh, I was in a few different unions. I put myself through college at Temple. Mm -hmm. That cost me 60 grand. Like, I'm a very smart guy. Uh, as to where I was, I, I actually have pensions right now, 401ks, things that I can't cash out on until I'm a little older. Mm. But I've made a lot of smart, wise deci decisions that if you met me now this last year and a half and didn't know any of them things, yeah. to find those things out, you'd be like, there's no way that that's him. But this is where it took me. Uh, I was staying a couple of different places, but this is kind of where I have home base, uh, or created home base rather. Uh, PennDOT actually owns where we where we stay, but they recently had people come and, and clear everything out. Um, everything of mine was trashed, so slowly recouping and getting things back from, from that. Um, I'm gonna be honest, it looked like somewhere that I wouldn't be judged, and, and uh, I like that, you know. Um, I'm not going to say, like, I look at it like, oh, I'm going to fit in down here. It's just who I am as a person because I'm not. But, you know, it was just kind of like everybody was doing their own thing. And I didn't have eyes on me and being, you know, ridiculed and critiqued all the time. Like, I hate that. Well, we're with me and my girlfriend right now are homeless. Um, is that her down there? Yes, yes it is. How'd that happen? I, uh, How'd well, that happen? we were living at the mother's temporarily. Off and on, we go there to help her. And she got sick. She had a stroke uh, last week. So she was coming home the other night. And the older, I guess, the, the older sister, younger sister, said we had to move out. She gave us 15 minutes, so we had to leave. I mean, I haven't been here for 10 years, but I guess a month ago I came up here and haven't left. I was living with a family member in Delaware. Uh, on and off, I've been here um, going on like a year, um, like almost two years. I think. So how long have you been down out in Kensington then? Four and a half years. Year and a half now. How has that year and a half been? Can I curse? Yeah. It's fucking horrible, dude. Do you eventually want to move out of I Kensington? I live an urban lifestyle and no, this is my hood. I have fun here. You like living in Kensington? Yes. I never wanted to leave here. What do you think about the neighborhood? I like, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. Right now, it's fucked up. The situation that we have in Kensington is incredibly complicated. For the next few months, they'll continue their efforts, venturing out in the community to help the city with their efforts to improve public safety. Listen, the Kensington neighborhood is in trouble. We're in crisis. What we're doing now is, again, a several week to month outreach where we are really trying to reach every last person who is in desperate straits out there. Now, Rock Ministries, they are looking for more volunteers. If you want to help and you're 18 or older, you can apply on their website. I got pulled into a car and uh, beat up, and they tried to rape me, but I got out. Well, when I got in the car, you know, we were supposed to go somewhere. Um, like, I kind I rarely really knew who he was. I didn't really know him that well, so I was being really dumb, stupid. And um, at first, it was fine. You know, he was happy, everything, and then... He wanted my money and I didn't have any money, he didn't believe me and he locked me in the car and punched me in my face and pistol whipped me. Um, I had blood all over me and um, everybody was calling the cops, they pulled up and uh, they called him. I was an avid, I was a regular beer drinker, Budweiser, sometimes vodka, you know, sometimes liquor. Um, but I've been going at it for, I guess, we well, don't say full, but at least over 30 years. 
30 years? Of being an addict and alcohol. And now currently, let's talk about what drug are you struggling out here with now? Struggling with this fentanyl right now. Trank? All yeah. that stuff? Yes, sir. Yeah. And how were you introduced to the trank? Uh, well, it was heroin back in the day, but... Right. Um, a friend of mine just gave it to me. I mean, we just bought it and then tried it. What made you decide to try it? Uh, peer pressure, I guess. I mean, you know. Uh, the only drug I did was uh, is ice. Uh, meth. Okay. Um, it started out as something that was uh, a. It started out as a, it's like a, a, a party thing with, gr with groups of people. Uh, everyone was getting high and, and, and being stupid. Um, but then it ended up being coming, becoming a necessity out here to be alert, to stay awake, uh, to kind of be safe, uh, to watch my stuff as well as watch other people's things. Well, I used to smoke weed when I was 12. I, I, I start I smoked my first wet blend at 12. At 12? Um, yeah. Who introduced you at such a young age? Some girl I went to disciplinary school with. We came down here. This is when I lived in the Northeast. And we came down here on D Street. Got that good Wakata back in the day. Okay, let's talk about Kensington right now. What drugs are you struggling out here with? K2 and sometimes crack. What does it do to you? What type of high? It gets high? me high. It don't matter. I don't know what type of high. It just gets me high. How long do it last? It don't last that long. That's why I don't like it. But I smoke it all day, so I don't care. I mean, I smoked weed when I was like 12, 13, trying to fit in. Uh, I drank a little bit back then. Uh, I never got a habit. Uh, my pill habit is what started me on. Like, I got a habit on pills. And that's how I started uh, using opiates. Why were you taking pills? I had a knee surgery, uh, undiagnosed by the doctors. They could have given me antibiotics if they had uh, done the right testing in the beginning. But by the time they did do the testing, uh, I had to have full knee surgery. And uh, mm. it was a staph infection. Uh, mm. So I had to take morphine and things like that. And uh, I guess. That didn't even get me hooked. It was really emotionally, um, it was for an emotional crush. Uh, I started smoking crack when I was nine years old. It was my, uh, my first hit of crack. Who introduced you at such a young age? My dad. He smoked crack with you? He, he yeah. gave you the pipe and yep. taught yep. you how to smoke it? Uh, I was doing some chores. Like I said, I'm the oldest son, so I had a lot of responsibility throughout the years as, as you know, other siblings came into the world. A lot got put on me because of my dad being the way he was. You know, he was a good guy, but he wasn't uh, too much of a help family-wise. He's a good father, good husband, all that, but good dad, but uh, not a very good role model, obviously. Um, I, I became a, an alcoholic and a, a crack smoker because of him. Uh, was the first time I tried at nine, ten years old. It was a habitual. By habitual, I mean, uh, you know, I was an addict uh, by the time I was 14, 15, and I'd say by about 17, 18, uh, just full-blown addiction. Completely took over my life. Um, a lot, a lot has happened between, uh, you know, that, that very first hit of, you know, cocaine and being an alcoholic till now, 36. I struggled with cocaine. And and uh, fentanyl and trent. Tell us, what's the difference between those two drugs? Well, I love putting it together. I speedball. I like speedballing. It makes me feel good. It it takes the stress off. I'm friends. Um, ones that I thought were friends actually. Uh, yeah, they introduced me to the little weed. Then I went to the powder. Then I went to the heart. Then eventually I had to start doing the dope, and that's what I've been stuck on now. You know? How did your family react when they found out you was using drugs? Oh, they was pissed. They was really pissed, man. Um, they actually turned their backs on me, you know? 
um, which that kind of hurt it because I needed the more support to get off of it, you know? I really wanted to get off of it, but they all turned their backs on me. Have you tried getting off of it on your own? I have, but I actually relapsed and ended up right back on where I first started. What made you relapse? Um, missing my kids, to be honest. Um, me and the mother, you know, we separated and due to my drinking problem, I, I was an alcoholic. Thank God I haven't drank in four years. Um, but yeah, I, I, it was my fault, you know. I, I blame myself for that. But yeah, that's what made me relapse. What drugs are you currently struggling out here with? Crack and fentanyl. All right. Can you tell us the biggest difference between those two drugs? Uh, fentanyl is a downer and crack's an upper, so fentanyl you're like falling asleep and crack you're like, I don't know how to put it, like skitzing and like running around and your eyes are bulging out. And right. What and fentanyl you get physically addicted. Physically and you go through withdrawal. Yeah. If not having it. Yeah. How much do you spend on your drug habit every day, would you say, average? Um, 100 to 200. And what do you do for work? I don't work. I, I do things, like, illegally to get money. I saw you walking. Where were you heading off to? Trying to get sell this pussy. I mean, you keeping it real. I, I respect your honesty. Can't you find another job to do besides putting yourself at risk? I don't put myself at risk. I fuck for money, and it's a quick fuck, no feelings attached, and I get that chicken. So how many guys would you say you spend time with every day? I spend day? time with them. They're in the pussy for two or five minutes, and they're out, and I get the chicken, and I leave. The only way I get money out here is I go in a train station, and I swipe people in for $2. Okay. What happened to your dad? My dad is a deadbeat. All right. My Do dad you... left me at the age of one. You never saw him since then? No, I used to go to Puerto Rico and see him and all of that. Okay. But he never paid attention to me like that, you know what I mean? So, uh, it took my stepdad. My dad, my stepdad was going to take care of me. Uh, I actually scrapped. For, I do DoorDash when my bike doesn't get stolen and um, I was working and doing odd jobs for with somebody but uh, he ended up kind of just using my time and my my uh, skill as, as a something that he wasn't uh, valuable to him like my time is valuable to, to me I thought it was valuable to him but it clearly wasn't never paid me for the amount of work I did not for nothing. It's, I'm, I was kind of thinking that was happening anyway. Just with the, the way that he was uh, <clears throat> kind of maneuvering and trying to mm -hmm. pay me with drugs instead of money. I was like, that's not how. That's <laughs> just not how this works, bro. Yeah. Like I'm not one of the, one of. The, I'm not a fiend. I don't, right, I don't right. need. I don't need it like that. Well, I mean, I do my little mechanic. You know, I, I change rotors and brake pads and all that. Oil changes. And um, you know. I um, do whatever I can, you know, whatever I can get my hands on, you know, yeah. clean yards, front, front of the houses, stuff like that. What are some hustles that people have out here to make money? Uh, that some, that people, a lot of people boost, like steal from stores and sell it down here. Um, a lot of people sell their food stamps, get on Suboxone and sell it. Girls and guys like sell their bodies down here. Uh, a lot of people just steal from each other. I, like, nobody works. Like, and sell, people sell drugs. What are the do's and don'ts for those who don't know about Kensington? The do's and don'ts. What can you tell them? Mind your business. Um, uh, mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. facts, right? Yeah, that's pretty much, you'll be alright if you do that. And, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I say to myself, People are not out here to be your friends. It is not a place to make friends. Um, they're gonna screw you the fuck over. It. So I learned that the hard way. I was really naive when I first came down here. Well, uh, if you're if you're using drugs, <laughs> you know, uh, you just, uh, my, mind your fucking business. If if you don't know them, they don't know you. you really ain't got no business fucking even trying to bother. 
Uh, people will play you out here. You will get played. You will. You will get. You'll get hurt. You'll get stabbed. You'll get shot. You'll get beaten. You will have your shit stolen from uh, your best friend. Mm. So you you have better luck out here trusting a complete fucking stranger. And by that, like I mean, I mean that with love. Like you you, you will get more love, respect, loyalty, and trustworthiness out of someone you don't fucking know and never met in your life than you ever will from someone you think hmm. is your best friend because they will play you till you're you're blue in the face and uh, just uh, so you you, use and abuse that's what can't. people do out here don't come out here <laughs> and there is no do <laughs> don't come out here <laughs> Um, there's even the children are vicious. I've seen them beat up on old women and rob them. Uh, I mean, I think that the people that aren't addicts are more vicious than the people that are addicts. Uh, we get attacked and robbed. Uh, I see the people on the blocks robbing their own customers. So it's really bad out here right now. It didn't need to be like that. Do you like living out here? Fuck no, dude. This is horrible. I sleep on the ground at night. Obviously, we know what time of year it is. It's so ungodly cold sleeping on the concrete at night. I see the young folks down here on the Ave. Um, they're, you know, they shoot up like they have because of the, uh, I guess the drug it eats their skin. And, and it just looks terrible, you know, they, and they're shooting up inside the wound. So it's, it's just, then I see a couple occasional deaths. Man. Yeah, so, yeah, it's. What are the do's and don'ts about Kensington? If somebody want to come out here, what would you tell them what to do and what not to do? The do's? I would just stay away. I mean, it's it's no good. It's it's not gonna it's not gonna get you anywhere. And you don't just say no. I mean, just your life is better off being sober. I'm trying to get there, and I know I think I will get there finally. Have you ever been able to stop your addiction? Yeah, I've been to rehab before, and I stopped for a little bit. Well, congrats, girl. That's, that takes a lot. Thank you. What was the longest claim time you had? Six months. That's amazing. How did you do it? It was so long ago. I think I was just scared. It was after my first time being homeless down here, and I was just scared. Do you get help from the government? Well, money? like welfare? Yeah. I get help? food stamps, and I have Medicaid. How much do you get every month in food stamps? 291. My food stamps, I sell the food stamps sometimes. Oh yeah, that, yeah. I, I, I have that heard 50%, that a lot. yep. So you do that's, get help from the government, you get food ridiculous. stamps? Yeah, it's 50%. Well, do you get cash assistance also? No sir, no. And how much do you get in food stamps every month? 291. How would you introduce the K2? Um, now Somerset. <laughs> Somerset? Yeah. Why you decide to try it? Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't mess with the dope out here, the fat and all Fucking no. I don't do fucking my thing. I fuck out of here and hack this voice. What's your, what's your living status? Where do you live? I live with my mother. What do you do all day? I don't know. How long this going to be? So do you eventually want to stop using K2 and the PCP, the weed? Do you want to stop that one day? No. Why not? No, I, oh my God, just leave me alone. What are you afraid of? I don't know. Okay, all right. We'll always to skip. Feel, to feel, to feel shit. To feel shit. What, what do you regret in life? <clears throat> you don't have any regrets? What all have you lost due to your addiction? What all have you lost? I don't know. When you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? I'm not ugly. 
If your friends or your family see this video, what message would you like to send to them? Get off my dick, my dick, my dick. What do you love most about yourself? I love my pussy.